Hi there and welcome to another PST2 Spoon Fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and I'm going to be taking you through Constantine's creating a sleek illustration that fades from line art to colour. And this is the final image on the tutorial. So lots of different areas of this image that we're going to be looking at. Um, you can see in the middle we've got the dancer image, which is a well used image. Uh, we're going to apply some drawing techniques, some masking and using some of the brushes to create some of these great effects that blend the line art into the coloured parts of the actual image. We're also going to play around with these little circles down here on the left and the right corners. And all of the files that you need are all linked to within the tutorial. So just head over to the tutorial and click on the links to download them. The first one is this um, vintage grunge textures provided by Princess of Shadows. Head over to a Deviant page and leave her a comment and tell her how you use those backgrounds. The first dance image that we're going to use is from iStock Photo. Again, I just downloaded the medium version, and that's the only one I'm going to be using in this tutorial because they are a little bit pricey, and you know you've got to find images suitable for your particular bit of work. You don't want to copy this image exactly. You want to use the same techniques on the images that you know that you've collected. Next up, we're going to use the bird images, the hooded crow from Stock Exchange, and finally check out all the other videos at psetoots.com in our video section. So let's get started on this great tutorial by Constantine. I'm just going to load up Photoshop and I should already have on there that initial background texture and that's on my layer one. I'm going to come back to these two layers in a second but once you've got that set up and you need a nice big canvas, I've just used the same size as my background image but in the tutorial you should start with something around 1100 by 1500 set at 300 dpi and then drop your texture in there. So, I'm going to load up my dancer image that I've got down here. And you can see I've got a couple of layers on here already. The first thing you need to do is create a new layer above your dancer layer, and that's my layer one. Okay, now I've already, if I just get rid of these two and zoom in, I've already started to sketch out that area there. So, that's the kind of thing we're going to be doing on top of our dancer layer. So I'm just going to delete that layer and start from scratch. Turn back on my dancer layer. Head over to the pen tool. And on that new layer, I'm just going to start to just use the pen tool to create an outline of the dancer image. And if as you go along, you just little turns, holding down the mouse button, start to get a nice clean cut a clean path around our image. So to start with, we're just going around the outside edge. Trying to pick up as much of the detail as possible. And then, obviously, we go all the way up the trouser leg. and so on, or until you get all the way around until we get back to the very start. So obviously you trace around all of these little edges and take your time with it. Once you've done that and you've still got that selected, what we need to do is head over to our brush tool, set it to one pixel, hardness set to 100, make sure the color's on black, Go back to our pen tool and zoom right back in here. Control click on your path, stroke the path, use the brush tool without simulating the pressure and click on OK and then hit enter to get rid of that. Now obviously we don't want that line across there but that's just to show you how I've gone around the shoot. You can see it's quite a nice line that I've created there. If you take your time you can get a really nice path around your shape. So that's what I did. And then I moved it underneath the dancer layer and I renamed it Contour 1. So I can turn off this layer and turn this one back on. Now, if I turn off the dancer layer, you can see the outline fairly well, going all the way around the dancer, around the lace, around the hair, uh, the lace coming out of the hoodie, sorry, and so on. Once you've done that, turn that back on. You need a dancer layer, a contour layer, and finally we need one more layer 
going to bring that underneath. I'm going to call that color. Okay, and this is where we're going to fill in the color. So you go back to your paths, select the path that goes all the way around your dancer. On your new layer, press Command Enter. And what Command Enter does, it turns that path straight into a selection. So you can see our little marching ants going around our dancer. On that new layer, we need to fill in with a solid color. So we're going to go for a really light color. Something like F seven E E D D. Click OK. And then just click in that area. Now you'll see if I turn this off, I didn't inverse my selection. So what's happened is I've got everything in the colour except for the area that I want. So all I need to do is select, inverse, and then fill. And if I turn off that top layer. You can see it's filled in our dancer. Okay, once you've done that, the next thing we should do is using that selection around our dancer, click on our dancing layer, and as we've inversed it, we can just head straight to the mask, click on mask, and you can see that it cuts out all of the area around our dancer. So once you've cut out your dancer, we're going to drag it straight onto our canvas so we can start using it in our main piece. So just hold down shift or control or command sorry and click and drag those layers onto your new layer. And that's how I got these two layers here. Now it didn't drag it was my colour layer. So I'm just gonna drag that on. In fact what I'm gonna do is just quickly instead of rescaling it all I'm just going to create that color layer one more time. And then fill. There we go. And then when I turn these back on, you can see that they all look really nice. Now, I've, once I drag it onto my main stage, I get rid of that. You can see I've started to draw in all of the other lines. Okay, and I did that in exactly the same way. I grabbed pen tool, just going to make sure that's on black, grab the pen tool and this layer on and lower the opacity of this layer, like so, and then on my contour layer, Just draw out my new paths and then stroke them like so. And again, you might want to Add in the final little bits of detail. And you're just going around, you're stroking all the shaded areas, all the lines. We haven't done anything on the face because you need to spend a lot of time with the face. And for this particular tutorial, we're not trying to turn the face into a vector art or anything like that. We're just trying to get all the details from the wrinkles of the clothing and the hands. So you can see we've just come around, and everywhere there's a line or a crease, we've just drawn a stroke. just to make sure that when we zoom out you can see it's starting to look like our guy and if we turn off that layer you can see how how that looks so I'm pretty happy with that I'm just gonna turn this layer back on and turn our opacity all the way back up to 100 so once you've got used to using the pen tool and you've stroked around the edges, you've dragged it onto the new canvas, onto our background layer, and you've then used the pen tool just to trace around those dark, those dark lines, the shaded areas, the detail of the belt, and so on. Again, the more time you've taken and the better result you're going to get in the end. So once you've got it, you need to position it somewhere central onto your canvas. And turn this back on. I'm going to stick these three, like click. I'm going to link these layers 
and I'm going to stick them into a group and call that dancer. So I'm going to duplicate this group and just call it dancer2. And then because we're all linked, I start to just play around transforming this, scaling it down. positioning it wherever you like. So I'm going to put it about there. Hit enter. And I'm going to bring that underneath my original, oh, not inside the layer. There we go. Underneath that layer. Now obviously you want to go away and try and find as many images as possible that you want to apply this to if you want to create the same kind of movement on this on this piece but again it can be used in any area you could have a car going from line art fading into colored art and so on it can be used in lots of different areas once you've got the images placed where you want them and I'm just going to duplicate these a few more times and just move them around until we get something that starts to look Again, just duplicate that one more time. Okay, and then just move that maybe down here. Okay, so once you've positioned them all, you should make sure that in each of the folder it should run in the following order your layers, your layer stack. It should go dancer, contour, colour. Dancer, contour, colour, dancer, contour, colour. Again, for all of the different dancers, the different images that you want to have on there. We're going to start now by going back into these. We're going to start masking out the areas. So we're going to start on our main dancer. Now, if we have a look at the original tutorial, you can see that only the left hand is line art. So if we go back to mine, that's this area here. So we click on our mask, okay, grab a nice brush, so 19, and we want to paint on, make sure your colour is black, and we're going to zoom in to this area here. Now we should be able to just mask straight over that area. Okay, so we're not deleting that area, we're just masking over it. So everything we paint on, on black will show through to the next layer. Like so. And then just zoom out. Okay, I like that. I'm going to do it on his, on his shoe as well. There's lots of nice detail down there. Catch this heel. Zoom out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to do his right hand as well. Okay, I'm just showing you that all we're doing is clicking on the mask layer and painting over the top in black. And because the other layers are stacked below, they just show straight through. And the more time and the more detail you put into those, those paths when you're drawing around them, the better the result that you're going to get. Okay and then just zoom out. And we're going to do the same on some of the other areas. So we go to Dancer 4, which is the one at the very bottom. Again, zoom in. I might do, make sure you're on the path. 
I might do the whole of his trousers, the whole bottom half of his body. So again, nice big brush. Like so. And then using some of the brushes that you may have downloaded from PST Toots or anywhere on the web, all those free brushes, if you change your brush now to a grungy brush, something like let's go have a look at it. something like that. Okay. And let's bring the size down. Just a little bit. Okay, and again, using that brush, as long as we're using the black color, if I click here now, it's going to reveal that area on the top. But another great tool that we can do is just bring down the opacity to something like 20 and just build this up. Just like really faintly in these areas here. Okay, and if I just grab the brush, pan it down here, go to the brush tip, and I'm just going to play around with a little bit. Starts to look a little bit like powder or something like that, just bursting through. Let's have a look what that looks like from a distance. Okay, that's not too bad. Kind of looks like it's breaking up. Bit of a solid line at the bottom there. So, again, if I just zoom in, just increase the opacity a little bit. out. That's it, it's starting to look a lot better. It looks like it's crumbling from drawing into colour. Okay, and again, we can do the same over on our other dancers. Make sure you click on the mask layer. I'm going to zoom into this one here. And this time I'm just going to make the whole top of this body line art and maybe try and fade it down. Make sure you turn your opacity back up. Nice big brush. In fact, let's leave his left hand. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then this area over here on the last guy, we're going to just try something a little bit different. So, again, nice big brush on the mask layer. Just going to leave maybe the shoe and the corner down here. So, I'm going to get rid of this top part just roughly. And this middle part. that area there and then just zoom in. In fact we could do this in in reverse. And if we actually get rid of that area here. Then when we go to our brush, we go to the eraser this time and we choose one of the grungier brushes 
fact, let's not use the eraser, let's just change the colour to white on our brush. Then go back to those grunge tools. On the grunge brushes, something like... I think something like that. And because now we're painting with white onto that masked area, bring it right down. we should get the image coming back and we do again so if we zoom out okay it kind of looks like maybe it's been scratched away or something like that or we can just go back make it all Zoom back in, choose a different brush, just play around with the different brushes until you get an effect you know that you're you're happy with. Maybe one like this. Again, too big. It's the quality of the brushes that you get for free now, they're absolutely massive, so okay, change the colour back to white. Maybe play around with direction of the brush. Just revealing that tiny little area of the hip. And the same if we zoom in down here. This time we change it back to black and we just get rid of these areas, lower the opacity right down. And zoom out. Just looks like, because we're using a nice broken up brush just looks like it's either fading in or just maybe crumbling and so on again the different more different brushes you use the better effect that you're going to start you know going to start to get but i think that looks really good i might come back onto this one over here which i believe was dancer number 3 and then change it back to white maybe choose something that looks like it's bursting up a little bit this one's got that one there might be useful. And again, bring the brush size down. Because we're on white, past is only low. See a slightly smudged. In case okay, so you can get lots of different effects, as long as you have the original image mask on the top layer, the contour layer underneath, all your line art, and then the color layer underneath that. And again, you could change those colors to be any colors that you liked. We can start to get some really, really nice effects. Now, we've done exactly the same thing with the bird file, so if I just show you them over here. So again, we just downloaded these images straight from the site, drew the path around them, masked it out, and if I just grab them, this is one of the files I did before, I'm going to grab my crows, okay, grab my crows and just drag them. I'll get the feathers as well and explain those. A 
Oh, wrong one. Let's get that one out of the way. There we go. So I've just dragged those onto our file like so. I'm going to move them to the very top. Okay, and I'm just going to turn them off for now. So if we start with the crows file, again you can just see all we've done is we've masked out the layers and we've line drawn in the parts and then using a brush tool only slightly just see we've accentuated some of those lines. Again if we zoom out oh, you can see the original line drawing that was used there around the edge. Okay, and again, that doesn't have to sit there. We can move this, you know, move this layer around. There's another bird up at the top, so let's just zoom out so we can get an idea. Okay, that looks pretty good. Looks like the bird's coming down. And again, I can just show you on this top one. Just you can see the line art just coming through. Just use the brush tool to basically mask out that area. You can just faintly see them out, just enough that it gives you the impression. Okay, and again, different uh, brushes give you different effects on your final image. And then finally, again, we went back to the files, downloaded our feathers, which if I just quickly scroll down to down here, you can get from stock exchange again, just do a search for feathers or something like that, and you should come up with loads. Just simply drag those in, and again, just mask out different areas, merge it all together. If we zoom in, it just gives a little bit of motion, like the leaves are falling off the birds and so on. Again, oh, just on the right layer, you can move them into place like so. And they just help build up, you know, build up the layer. If I just bring that down here. There we go. And adds a little bit of depth to the image as well. So once you've, you know, you've got your UCs in the pen tool, you're doing a lot of paths in this tutorial, just pathing around the, the edges of the shapes, then coming in and doing the shadow lines and so on, and then creating another layer underneath the colour, it allows you to, like I said before, to mask through to those areas. So once you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start creating the circles. So create a new group at the top and call it circles. And then within there, create a new layer. Now what we need to do is we need to grab a colour, something like F8 EF DE. Okay, it's similar to that other colour we used earlier. It's not exactly the same, it's just going to be slightly different so it does stand out. Then we're going to bring in our brush tip tool, grab our brush, um, let's set it on one just to start with. So we're going to change that to be 20 pixels. We're going to have the roundness set to 100%, hardness set to 100%, and spacing we're going to set to 189. Then we're going to go down to shape and our shape dynamics. We need to set the jitter to 78%. Uh, the action jig uh, angle jigger, jitter even, we need to set that to 20. And then make sure smoothing's ticked. Go to scatter. There we go. And scatter, we want both axes set to 1000, control off, count set to 1, the jitter set to 100, and that set to off. And again, make sure you've got smoothing set as well. Once you've done that, then we're simply just going to draw on these circles. And you can see they're just starting to show up.
Okay, so not too many, just enough to give the idea. Probably there's a few too many down here, but you get the idea. Nice one over the wing over there. Once you've done that, we're going to create a new layer. So I can just move that to the side. Still inside circles. And we're going to command click our original circles so they're all selected. And then we're going to go over to the lasso tool. Find it over to the lasso tool, and then we're gonna right click and we're gonna stroke it. Now, make sure you've set your brush already to pixel one pixel black, and then we're gonna center it. So, I need to make sure I go back and do that. Set that back to black, set my bus brush now down to one pixel. Because we've got it selected, we're on the lasso tool, control click, and I can stroke it. With the stroke settings, we want to make sure that we've got one pixel black center is selected, and then make sure you've got blending mode set to normal, opacity set to 100, and that should be fine. And then click on OK. Let's have a look. OK, and you can see it's just added those little dark areas there. So let's do that one more time. Just Draw click, stroke the area, one pixel black, um, stroke it the radius, make sure it's on center, venue mode is normal, and then click on OK, and then deselect. And that just adds that little ring around, and we can see there where the bubbles have come together. It looks really good. OK, so we're going to do some more circles, but we're going to come down to these corners now, the bottom left and bottom right corners. So hopefully I can just move that up. So I'm going to create a new layer down here. I'm going to change my color to 8B, B6, and 8-7. Okay, nice green color. Click on OK. And then we're going to apply some new brush settings to this bottom layer. Now we're doing the bottom left and bottom right or bottom right corner with this green. So grab the brush tool back in, head over to brush, and with this one we just need to change these settings. So we want to have it set. Let's click on my brush tip one pixel. So to start with, we're going to change that to 70 pixels. Okay, then we're going to make sure the angle is on zero, roundness is a hundred, hardness is a hundred, and then spacing we're going to leave on 189. Then we're going to come down to shape dynamics. We're going to change that from 78 is fine, pen pressure is fine, 0 on minimum diameter, 20 on the angle jitter, everything else looks okay. Come down to scattering, we're going to set that to 1000, we're going to set that to pen pressure, a count of 6, 100%, uh, let's do 6, sorry. 100% for the count jitter is fine. Make sure your control is off. And we should be good to go. So I'm just going to drag that over to the side. So I'm going to start up at the left up here. And come down the right hand side of it. Okay, and then I'm going to fill in the bottom area down here. So let's just bring that up and zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so I want to get this bottom right area, you know, I want to get it quite strong. So I'm just gonna let them just sneak in a little bit. Like so. Okay, maybe just creep out. A little bit over here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab. Actually, I'll do that in a second. I want to move on to. Our left hand side. 
On the left hand side we're going to do exactly the same, but we're just going to change the colors. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm just going to go make sure I remember that. I'm going to call that green. And this one's going to be some light blue, maybe more purpley color. And on this layer, just change the color. I'm going to set the color to 99A3B4. Click on OK. And this time we're just starting over this left hand side. Like so, until you get a nice build up. Maybe just get them mixing just a little bit here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is bring my brush settings back. Um, in fact, I don't want okay, let's do, I don't want any of these, I just want a nice big circle now. And I'm just going to fill in this area here. So that those circles just look like maybe they're just bubbling out a little bit. And again, back to this layer. Make sure you grab that green colour again. And I'm just gonna fill in this area here. Like so. Okay. Once you've done that, we need to set both of those layers to color burn. So head straight up. There's the first one, and here's our second one. Okay, it's looking a lot, a lot, lot better. So that's the basic tutorial. I know I haven't done it for a lot of dancers like in the original, but you get the general you know the general idea is we've created a line up for each of them. We've used different masking brushes to bring out different areas that we want to be predominant on our image. I think you you have a good look. You can pick up some really useful tools there and creating a nice image. Head back over to the original tutorial and read all the stuff in the introduction and in between the steps about you know the layout of the different characters creating motion and so on. Uh, you can buy all of the dancers' images over at iStock Photo, and you can get all the other free images at the Stock Exchange. Don't forget to check out our video section on PSD Toots. I've been Gavin Steele, taking you through the steps for Constantine's creating a sleek illustration that fades from line art to colour. Thanks very much.